Let's go. All right. So, the plan for today, boys, simple. We are going to win this single prize tournament. It's uh, 64 players, six rounds, no top cut. So if we go six and zero, oh, uh, yeah. Not if, uh, when it's happening. Everyone knows that video games are dumb. But this one is dumber than most. It takes and it takes, but never will you catch it giving. Its fits of untethered stupidity rival that of... Nope. No, not that either. At least, that's what I thought before today. This is how a Pokemon tournament changed me forever. Now, before we get into the games, you need to understand something. My deck works. In theory. Before this tournament, I considered a bunch of different options, but settled on something that I thought would be fun to play and pretty decent. I'm playing Single Strike Stonjourner. That means my two main Pokemon are this guy and this guy. Houndoom provides energy acceleration and Stonejourner is who we attack with. That's the natural order. Like, we don't usually attack with Houndoom because its attack isn't very good. That's what I thought, anyway. And that mindset ended up being pretty important for this game. You'll see why. My first game was against this Dragapult deck. Dragapult is a good deck in the single prize format because it naturally favorably imbalances the prize trade. What exactly does that mean? Well, in Pokemon, the prize trade is a concept that you can apply strategically to become more efficient with your choices. For example, say I knock out my opponent's active Pokemon and take a prize card. Assuming that I can do that for every turn for the rest of the game, it's impossible for me to lose because my opponent can only take one prize every turn for the rest of the game. So I take one, they take one, and so on. And I win because I took the first knockout. That is, unless my opponent can knock out more than one Pokemon per turn. Or maybe they have a way to stop me from knocking them out. That's what Dragapult does. Its ability inherently alters the prize trade because every time I try to attack it, there's a 50-50 shot that I don't. It really is a broken ability. Anyway, here's how it went. My opponent got off to a slow start and did an attack for the first few turns. I whipped a second turn attack because of a dumb misplay, but then I picked up my first prize card by KOing a support Pokemon. They answered, and four turns into the game, I realized something I should have gotten from the jump. Okay. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. Yeah, yeah, so we've got... They've got dark... Oh my god, I forgot about that. My Houndooms hit Dragapult for weakness. So, having realized that, I tried to adjust my strategy, but it was too little too late. They flipped a few lucky heads on their ability. Bang, bang, bang. Okay, let's, uh, yeah. RNG, please. Fuck. And ran through my Houndooms. So remember what I said about being undefeated? Not if, uh, when. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> My second game was against Whimsicott, which relies on efficient attacks and good drawing to win games. Its attack is strong enough to knock out anything in the single prize format, so I knew I had to start out strong and use my speed to get out ahead. My opponent's opening turn was a little slow, so I took advantage of it by hitting his lone cottony before it could evolve. Oh, okay, so we're, yeah, yeah, we're in a great spot, so we go like that. Yeah, so we've got great play here. Do that. Oh, that's that's stupid. I don't know. That just mouse slipped. We've got this. We do that. We don't give them... Uh... Yeah, we don't give them the new hand with the lucky egg. Uh, then we put him back a turn again. I braced myself, but the attack I was expecting never came. 
I maneuvered around his only source of draw power, and he dead drew into oblivion. It wasn't a good win, but at this point, I'd take it. I figured this was the game's way of making it up to me after the last match. My next game was against Dubin, the organizer of the tournament. We started the game, and at first I didn't know what I was looking at. Alright, Cricketune, eh? I don't remember what Cricketune does at all. I knew the game would be tough because of his ability to attack the bench as well as our main attacker's weakness to grass, but I went to work anyway. Then I noticed something else. Houndour is weak to grass as well, so essentially our entire deck took twice the damage against Cricketoon. Actually, so <clears throat> I don't know, maybe we gear up for the attack with this dude. Uh, we try and get a third single strike energy on it. Oh wait, he has... Oh, so we're just, yeah, so we're just going to lose. I wasn't optimistic when I figured that out, but nevertheless, I traded with him until he got down to one prize card. At this point, I had a chance. I had been dead drawing for the last few turns, but I still had a chance. If I could knock out his Cincino, and he couldn't get his nine card hand down to one, I would win. I held my breath and hoped. He's going to Stellar Wish, probably Switch. He needs to get rid of a lot of cards out of his hand, um, which, I, I don't know, he might not be able to do. He's got the Viridian Forest to get out one dead card. Uh, the Palpad. Come on. Come on, can he do it? Can he do it? Oh my god, <laughs> please no, please no. Oh no! <laughs> oh, that sucks. That's so dumb. If we just got the research there and we boss the Cricketot, we win. That's so stupid. But another L. Remember what I said about undefeated? Not if, uh, when. It's happening. After taking the tough L, our next opponent was playing Kingdra whose ability allows it to sit on the bench and collect energy until it had enough to slaughter you and your entire family. I noticed my opponent was also playing Dracovish, but I didn't realize what that meant until too late. He was playing Kingdra. Kingdra, Frostmoth, Frostmoth, Dracovish. So that's... Okay, sure. Not sure what Dracovish does, but... Basically, Draco Vish's ability prevents Pokemon from evolving, and so my opponent's strategy was to use it as a wall while his Kingdra collected energy on the bench. He also used a Cleffa, whose ability on a coin flip allows you to draw six new cards. I wasn't too happy when he flipped heads on that. I don't think they've had any draw support yet, so maybe we've got... Oh, okay, sure, cool. That's... that's... Not salty about that, that's cool. Or the second time. Ah, uh, cool double heads, bro. I dead drew for a few turns, and he started taking knockouts on my dudes. Just gotta stop sucking, I guess. Just gotta stop uh, losing to the game instead of losing to this dude. Uh, that's cool. And I dead drew again. Please, something? It's so bad, I hate this game. I hate this game so much. And again... Uh, draw, top deck, please, please, anything? <laughs> That's so freaking bad. And again. But, uh, <laughs> it's not him. It's not him <laughs> that's beating us. It's the game. The game's like, yeah, no, we actually don't want you to play. I was so fed up at this point, I was ready to break my computer. En route to my third loss, I was seeing red. But then, I had a moment of clarity, and suddenly I realized something I should have realized after the first game. <sighs> actually, the, the problem is, it's probably my fault, actually, because my deck probably is just, is just bad. The reason I was losing wasn't the RNG of the game. It wasn't my unlucky flips. Heck, it wasn't even the seven straight turns of drawing literal poop. It was me. I was the one who needed to change, not the game. 
I needed to practice, get better, build better decks, make better meta calls, make better plays, be more observing, be more intuitive, be more creative, assess efficiency better, and read the freaking cards better. If I want to win tournaments, I need to become someone else. I need to become something else. I need to be the best that ever was. So that's what I'll do.